G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here from the Byron Bay Observatory. I've been thinking about astrophotography style. Do astrophotographers have style? Of course they do. But seriously, we take photos of very scientific subjects. It's a very scientific form of photography. So if it's scientific, there should be an objective way of doing things. But when we review different astrophotographers, we do see them tend towards different styles. Now I'm gonna go through a number of famous or infamous astrophotographers here on YouTube and in the wider astrophotography community. And side note, they are all better than me. So I'm in no position to judge and I'm not judging. I just want to look to see if any of them have a particular style that we can identify, a subjective style. I don't think there's anything wrong with having a particular style. I have a style myself that I'll talk about. And it's also just nice just to look at other people's work and to see how they do things, especially a broad overview picture of how they do things and what their specializations are. So join me as we go through some of the coolest astrophotographers out there, some of my favorites. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. sound of the CEM 60 it sounds like a Pac-Man game love it and synchronize audio here we go okay so the first cab off the rank is Mark G now Mark G is a landscape photographer from New Zealand and his work is stunning. Uh, now I know Mark and looking at his work, which is incredible, uh, I get this sense that he has a real cinematic kind of quality to his work and literally as well because he does this sort of stuff where he can do um, like time lapses underwater which are absolutely mind-blowing. An astrophotography time lapse under and over the water uh, and he has this uh, beautiful music behind the things he creates. And maybe that comes from the fact that he works at Weta Digital. Um, but even his still images, I find, have this really cinematic kind of drama to them. The way they're framed and the way they sit on the page is just very cinematic to me. It definitely has that um, director of photography style uh, feel to them. Now, if we compare this to another landscape photographer, Alan Wallace, uh, who's also on YouTube, Alan's work is very similar in that he does these beautiful vista type landscapes. But looking through his gallery, I get a different kind of sense. It's not so much a cinematic quality. His, his photos look more like paintings to me. They have this really painterly touch. They're both soft but also framed in a kind of romantic sort of way. I'm not going to dive, deep dive into all their galleries but you should check all of these guys out. I'll leave all the links as I go. Now do I have a style? Of course I do. My style I feel is very light. I don't like to push the black point very hard so you can see there's not a lot of hard black in my work unless I'm trying to uh, cover something up which is certainly possible but when I'm not trying to cover something up I definitely have a uh, kind of luminous feel about my photos. I don't try and go very high contrast with the colors. I don't push the saturation too much. I'd rather have a more pastel look to them and give more detail in the nebula uh, themselves. Another photographer that reminds me a little bit of my style uh, is Nico Carver. Uh, Nico is also on YouTube and his gallery also has that same, if I just flick between them, he also has a very luminous feel to his photos as well. There's not very much black point being pushed here. You can see there's the blacks only appear in uh, some of this solar work and lunar work and stuff like that. It doesn't, in the deep space images, he, he also likes to bring out the luminosity of the image as well, which I think is great. Uh, now, if I flick over to Trevor Jones, Trevor Jones is the same. He does have a few images where he's pushed the black point a little bit, but the overall style of Trevor's work from Astro Backyard is, I feel they tend towards the red a little bit. Now, this may be a symptom of the fact that he is shooting from his backyard in a more light polluted area, so you do rely on the hydrogen alpha filter a bit more. Um, some of them are very well balanced, like uh, this Pelican Nebula. He's got the blues coming through beautifully. 
and he has really high quality, high contrast work, but he doesn't push that contrast too hard so you get more of that detail as well. Again, something I really like. Next cab off the rank, we have Antoine from Galactic Hunter. Uh, now you can see he doesn't push the black point too much. There's this one or two here that has that black point pushed, but generally speaking, uh, he's also quite luminous. He brings out a lot of the dust detail and sometimes it's quite extreme. Uh, like you'll see this uh, Orion narrowband, uh, complete star reduction here. It is quite a brutal image, but he is pushing that uh, luminosity so you can really see all the detail from the wider area, uh, which is a great technique. Despite that luminosity, the background is kind of a neutral gray. It doesn't tend towards red or blue or anything like that. That's definitely a more kind of scientifically accurate way of looking at uh, the blackness of space. Um, to our eyes, of course, it's black, but when we can expose them, we can pull out the, the gray a bit and not force it into the black zone. He also does introduce some drama into his images by really pushing that contrast. So instead of the wispy black areas just being sort of a gray or brown whisperiness, uh, it's more of a dramatic black contrast, which also works really well for these images. Next we have Sarah, Sarah Wager or Sarah Wager. Uh, she's a fantastic photographer. If you're not following her, you should because her work is really brilliant. She does uh, obviously specialize in more narrowband stuff. I think she's, she shoots from Spain maybe. Uh, she uses the two camera trick where she is using two telescopes or two cameras to combine different data of the one target into a final image. Her narrowband work is just fantastic and the style that she has I feel is like a it really concentrates on the structure of the nebulosity itself. So the stars are very well reduced and we do have a lot of that detail and a lot of those um, kind of pastel colors. She uses the Hubble palette a lot, but she tends towards this orangey brown sort of look. So again, when we watch these galleries from a broad overview, we can, we can pull out the overall style of the astrophotographer. And Sarah's style definitely tends towards this uh, oranginess. It's not quite brown, it sort of leans towards the orange. Uh, and she's been very consistent with that particular palette. And I really enjoy her photos. They're really fantastic. Uh, next, we have a photographer who I've been following for a while, particularly on Instagram, I think is where I first found Bray Falls. Uh, and his work is incredible. He's doing, he, he just keeps getting better and better. And he's been doing a lot of it recently. I'm, I'm sure that his Instagram has more than his Astro Bin does, but his work is technically remarkable. He just manages to, to capture things in such sharp clarity. I'm almost tempted to say the sharpness of his images are a signature of his style. He's also very good at changing it up and doing different subjects like the moon and planets and stuff like that. Uh, but you should really check out some of, some of his deep space stuff, pulling out the luminosity, but it's also very high contrast stuff. You can see we've got a, a few more black backgrounds here, so he does push the black point a bit harder, but that itself adds to the drama. You can also see that the colors are saturated more than perhaps me or Nico would have done, but this, this adds this kind of very dramatic impact to the images. So Brayton's a really fantastic astrophotographer and you should check out his gallery. Next we have the OG, Chuck. Chuckers, Chuck's astrophotography. Uh, Chuck is a prolific astrophotographer, as you know. He's a huge TikTok star now as well. And uh, his work, he obviously mixes it up. He's got a lot of solar work in his gallery. He does push the black point sometimes and sometimes he decides not to. And this is something which I feel I do sometimes as well. I will treat each subject differently. So even though there's an overarching style to what we do, uh, you can see that where he needs to, he'll treat something differently. So his Eastern Veil, vale, uh, we have a lot of the red through the area, so it's a bit more of a red dominant image. Even the blue is sort of mixed up in the red. But, uh, but when we go to Dumbbell, it just process slightly different to give a bit more emphasis on that blue-red contrast. Uh, so I think that's a good strategy as well to treat every target differently and process it with respect to that particular target to draw out what you want from that. Interesting though, if I scroll down through the gallery, I can see he was definitely more fond of the more pastel uh, sort of look and the less contrast the images uh, earlier on. And he's tended more to push that contrast and those colors a bit harder lately. So maybe there's an evolution of his style here. Also, congratulations on 100K. 
and your silver YouTube Play Award. That's uh, really great work, Chuck. Keep it up. Next, we have Judy Schmidt. If you haven't heard of Judy Schmidt, she's uh, not a typical astrophotographer in the sense that she, I don't think she does her own telescope acquisition, but she is a master of Hubble image processing. In fact, I think she has more APODs than all of us combined. Uh, her name pops up in APOD all the time because she goes through the Hubble image data and processes that data. Now, if there is a style for Hubble, I think Judy really represents that style really well. She doesn't pump the colors too hard. It's more of that pastel kind of look for, uh, for more detail. And when you're working with Hubble data, that's really what we're here for is that detail. Uh, her work is absolutely incredible, but her name is now synonymous with great Hubble processing. You can definitely see, again, broad overview of her gallery. Her style is um, not to push that contrast too hard and to give a real sense of the depth uh, that you can get from a Hubble image. The um, dynamic range of these images is just fantastic. She's very careful with her processing and she's a master of what she does. Uh, next, I had to mention Thierry Legault because Thierry is um, from France and he's one of these master astrophotographers, but his work isn't like the typical stuff you would see on Instagram. His stuff is like these technical achievements. All Everything he does is some sort of incredible conjunction or some incredible astro event that happens. Uh, he's an expert at catching, capturing the International Space Station flying past the moon or planets or, or during an eclipse even. Uh, his work is incredible. So because of that, you might look at his work and think they're not quite as dramatic as some of the images that we see on Instagram, but what he's capturing is, is not so much for, for just getting likes on Instagram, it's, it's these incredible events. Look, here's the moon uh, occulting Mars, and you can see he's captured the, uh, the limb of the moon just across from the Terminator and Mars going behind it. It's technically impressive. Being technically impressive is something that theory is all about. He captures such high detail on the space station, uh, both when it's illuminated or not illuminated. He's got a bunch of great Aurora work. Um, it's really an incredible gallery. So I encourage you to check out Theory if you can. He's, he's literally written the book on astrophotography. If he has a style that I can identify, it's, it's these technical transient events. He's just very good at being in the right place at the right time and capturing that event in razor sharp quality. And I have to mention Adam Block. He is well known for his Pix Insight tutorial videos and he'll take uh, so long on one particular step that I just don't have the patience for, to be honest. He is just so good at that software. And so I, if you're learning Pix Insight, I thoroughly recommend that you go and check out Adam Block's tutorials. They're incredible. Now we can see in Adam's, uh, unlike uh, some of the other ones where we don't push the black point, as hard, he does push the black point and he does pull out the colors, but not too much. They're not like deeply saturated. They're just saturated enough to get an A-pod. <laughs> but no, he, he does have the color saturation giving a kind of impact and drama to the images, which is great, but he doesn't sacrifice the dynamic range too much, which is good. Broad overview of his gallery here. You can just see it's just absolutely impressive. Uh, he manages to capture things uh, really sharp. And that's one thing that I can say about Adam's style is that the technical level of his processing really allows each individual image to just come across so clean and so perfect. Uh, if, if, clean, if cleanliness is a style, I guess that's, uh, that's Adam Block's style, it's just Really nice. So there you have it. Do astrophotographers have a style? Yes, I think they do, and that's fine. Uh, now, if you go to the Pix Insight website, and they have a question there about, is Pix Insight a replacement for Adobe Photoshop? And the author of the answer to this uh, frequently asked question really goes in hard about the difference between subjective and objective processing. And he sees Pix Insight as the scientific way to uh, process an image. 
But if that were true, all our images would look exactly the same and there'd be one right way of doing things. At the end of the day, PixInsight is well used for astrophotographers all around the world to process the images whichever way they want. And the great thing about PixInsight is we can adjust the parameters and the algorithms that we want to use to get the result that we want and to treat the targets the way they deserve to be treated. So I think it's a bit of a, a null argument to kind of argue about whether PixInsight or Photoshop is the best program to use. I tend to use both of them. I do my stacking and averaging and image calibration and all of that in PixInsight. I get things the way I'd like them to be as scientific and objective as possible. But when it comes to treating the image with my own brushstroke, with my own style as an astrophotographer, I do go over to Photoshop and I do adjust those levels and shadows and, and tweak the image the way I'd like. And that might be unscientific, but we all have our own style. Uh, perhaps Judy Schmidt is probably the best, most scientific one processing Hubble data and she doesn't stretch those colors. Uh, I think hers is a great example of how we can go more towards a more scientifically accurate but also aesthetically beautiful image at the end of the day. But I don't think I'm going to lose any sleep worrying about my, whether my images are more scientific or not. If I was in this for the science, I wouldn't be doing pretty pictures anyway. Pretty pictures is the gateway drug to the science. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Star Stuff. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and remember everything is meaningless and we're all going to die. <laughs>